Hi, today what I'm going to be working on is a firmware power consumption benchmark. Uh, I have a brand new keyboard uh, that essentially looks like this. This is just the, the keyboard plate, but then this is the essentially a blue micro that's been designed to fit that keyboard. Um, so it essentially fits just like this gets all screwed together uh, and then we have a full keyboard that is essentially uh, handheld here. Now this keyboard as you can see here has a little battery but what I've done is I've created another one that instead of installing a battery you can see like right through there's no battery instead of installing a battery I have connected simply a little DuPont cable where I can go and plug it directly to my um, power profiler from Nordic. This is the first version of it. That Now, so what will this do? It's gonna replace the battery. Obviously, I won't be able to charge it because this supplies the current only one way, but um, it essentially replicates um, supplying the, the, what the demand on the battery would be. Now, uh, the power circuit is a little bit different on this. There is no voltage divider to measure the battery. Uh, and then also, uh, it's actually very simplified. The battery gets connected directly to the, uh, the VDDH of the NRF52840 chip. Um, and then obviously VUSB gets connected to the uh, USB chip. So that means that I'm not using any external uh, an external power uh, regulator. I'm using the onboard chip power regulator for this. And in addition, uh, I've set it up to a 3.3 volt. So I could go all the way down to 1.8 volt, but I've set it to 3.3 uh, volt um, and actually that could be a good experiment to actually see if there's any difference in power consumption between the different modes um, and the different voltages in any case uh, what you're going to see me next is actually uh, I'm going to be jumping off over to starting ZMK uh, and then you're running the power profiler uh, after that I'm going to be flashing essentially disconnecting this, connecting it to the computer through the USB-C, flashing Blue Micro, and then I'm gonna reconnect it to the computer um, and then uh, reconnect through Bluetooth, because I'm not using the USB, I'm using the Bluetooth connection in both cases. And then I'm gonna be uh, running it through uh, and see what's the power consumption using Bluetooth, using a Blue Micro. Uh, and then after that, um, in both cases, both for ZMK and Blue Micro, I'm going to let it run, just not touching it, and see what is the um, sleep current. And then we'll see at what time does the sleep current actually ends up to be. Um, and then after that, uh, I'll get all the numbers out, uh, and then we'll be able to maybe have a table or something to compare the numbers. Uh, and uh, see what it all looks like so let's jump over to uh, the power profiler okay
Okay, so we're back, and it's actually quite interesting to see the numbers that we get. Um, so let me just see here. So we got between ZMK and Blue Micro, the sleep time is obviously uh, something that is configured. Um, and in ZMK, they went a little bit longer, and in Blue Micro, we went about 10 minutes, so like 15 and 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. But actually, what's quite interesting is. Um, the sleep current of ZMK, so whenever it's asleep, there's actually a difference of about 25% between Blue Micro and ZMK. That's going to look interesting. That means there's a, like on the Blue Micro side, there's definitely something, that's something that maybe I'll have to have a look and see um, what can be improved on there. Um, now on whenever typing and no typing, so that's when there's a connection, a Bluetooth connection with the computer. Uh, and this is where there's actually quite a bit of a difference uh, across the board. So what we can see here, like when there's no typing on that little keyboard there, how it's set up, um, we needed to supply about like 695 microamps. Um, and this is essentially, ZMK uses Zephyr uh, framework to be able to uh, communicate with Bluetooth and all of that. Uh, with Blue Micro, um, it's actually quite a bit more, about 40% more as the baseline when typing. We use uh, the RD Reno framework, which uses FreeRTOS um, as the operating system uh, to handle multiple tasks at the same time or to sequence the tasks. But also, um, it uses the, uh, the soft device, the Nordic soft device for uh, Bluetooth communication. Um, and it's quite interesting to actually see there's actually like a room to improve uh, on here. But it's not like going like crazy in the multi, uh, uh, the multi milliamps. Uh, uh. Also of note is this is ZMK as loaded. There's no extra configuration or anything. And we're not talking into like very, very low like ridiculously low uh, uh, microamps, it's still in the um, six, like around 700 microamps. So we're not that far different, but 40% is definitely significant. Uh, while typing, so if you go while typing, there's a small increase of current on ZMK, which is not a surprise. Although there isn't a significant increase um, on Blue Micro, but we we go up by about three percent and eight percent. So between typing and not typing, it's probably not a huge difference. Uh, I think uh, there's definitely a uh, an improvement uh, between the uh, Blue Micro and ZMK, uh, and this is probably like ZMK being a more modern uh, operating system to really run um, a low power device. So that that's actually is very interesting. So there's, there's room to improve on the Blue Micro, but they're comparable. Uh, Blue Micro is definitely easier to adapt, um, at least at least from, from what I understand, because uh, I, I got an Arduino background. So uh, I understand very well the Arduino framework um, and uh, how to extend it. Uh, the advantage also of the uh, the Arduino framework um, to be able to flash the uh, the hardware is you can flash anything to it. So if there's a problem uh, on the hardware that you need to troubleshoot, you've got the whole stack to be able to individually test GPIOs or try to blink things or anything that um, you can uh, you can think of to be able to troubleshoot. Uh, the keyboard. Uh, there's room for improvement on Blue Micro, but between ZMK and Blue Micro, obviously ZMK, if you've got very small batteries, um, they're gonna last longer, but if you've got pretty fat batteries between ZMK and Blue Micro, um, although 40% when you don't type is actually a, a significant number, but we're not talking uh, orders of magnitude like a 10 times or... Uh, they're quite comparable, which is actually quite quite good. So that's an interesting conclusion between the Blue Macro and ZMK. Uh, and uh, I'll post that up uh, for people to comment and see uh, what other people might get. Well, thanks. Bye.